Hello, my name is John, and this is the Mask Face Journal, and this is what I read this week. Green Arrow, number 6, written by Benjamin Percy and art by Stephen Byrne. This issue is not really continuing the story where we left off last issue. In fact, we're not even following Oliver Queen. Instead, we're following his half-sister, Emiko, who, in flashback, starts telling the audience what led her to becoming a double agent. There's some pretty typical teenage rebellion and questioning of authority here, between Emiko and her mother, Shadow. And for everyone watching Arrow, the word flashback is sure to set off alarm bells, but so far the author has been fairly consistently good, so I'm willing to hear him out. The new art is definitely different from before, and I would say there's a little less interesting, but it's still really good. Very clean and very colorful. Harley Quinn number 3, written by Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti, and art by Chad Hardin and John Timms. This is the end of the zombie outbreak from Space Story. This is silly, cartoony, and full of sexual innuendo. I can't hate this, and I can't exactly review it as if it's a serious story. What I can say, without spoiling things, is that the ending, despite being completely ridiculous, is kind of predictable. Maybe it's just me. Justice League number 4, written by Brian Hitch and art by Jesus Marino. Things are happening. That might be the best way of describing what's going on here. Okay, maybe it's getting a little clearer, but not by much. There's some sort of mass affection culling of humanoid species going on here, but by whom and for what purpose is anyone's guess. I find it kind of hilarious that the very end cover for this is just a picture of Batman, who by the way, does absolutely nothing in this issue. There's very little of interest to talk about in this issue, either because it's still in the middle of the story and we don't know where it's going, or because it's very little there. We learn nothing about the main characters, we learn nothing about the villains, and we learn nothing about the third party other than that they exist. I'm not really complaining yet, however, because doing so would be akin to stopping an episode of a TV show three quarters in and being pissed about not knowing how it ends. Supergirl number one, written by Steve Orlando and art by Brian Ching. While it's true that this series takes a lot of cues from the Supergirl TV series, it's definitely different. Kara is a teenager and therefore it's a high school series rather than an office series, if that makes any sense. This issue deals with Kara feeling like an outcast wherever she goes. She has trouble with Earth's, from her perspective, ancient technology, can't seem to find any friends, and gets reprimanded when she interrupts a hostage situation as Supergirl. Not being very familiar with the previous series, I don't know what that was like and what her interactions with previously established characters was like. I feel like that's going to be very important in upcoming issues. What I can see is that Kara comes off as hard to please and somewhat ungrateful, and whether that's an established character trait that's likely to continue over the course of the series, or if it's something that the character could eventually overcome, is it crucial to her likability? At least with me. Batman number 6, written by Tom King and art by Ivan Rice. This is an epilogue for the previous story as well as the setup for the next one. It's a short and emotional story about coping with the loss of a loved one. What we get here is an angry Batman or brooding Batman, but supportive Batman, and that's always nice. We also get some old school, almost forgotten D-list villains being up to no good in Gotham City. Captain Stingery and Kite Man. That's not spoiling anything, they're hardly significant to the narrative, but it's definitely fun to see. Deep cuts, as Kevin Smith would say. What this issue makes apparent is that this first story arc has only been the beginning in a larger plan, and I for one am very excited to see where we're going next. Superman number 6 by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. This is just pure fun. Roughly half this issue is action, and the other half is the aftermath. I think what makes this issue and this story in general work for me is the character work being done here. Superman, Lois, and John are all very enjoyable to read about, and the villain has been fun. Not to mention some pretty spectacular action sequences and concepts. Now, did this story need six issues to be told? Probably not. There's definitely some padding in the action, but overall, it's been great. Superman is back. The Flintstones, number three, written by Mark Russell and art by Steve Pug. This continues to give us a darkly hilarious twist to Flintstone staples. This time, it's the Great Gazoo, or rather the Flintstones take on First Contact. To recap this story would be doing it a disservice, because the heart of this is not in the plot, but the overall package. This book needs you to read it. It continues to be the funniest book I'm reading, so go out and buy it now. So that was what I read this week. Did you enjoy this video? Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video wherever you can. And if you did not like it, uh, please let me know in the comments and still share this video wherever you can. That is it for me this week.